Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I wanted to do a really short video today um, just on a topic that I've been discussing with some people recently um, and I thought it would make a, a sort of a semi-interesting video for you guys um, and that is um, if you're harvesting your own wood for wood carving which is what I do and I know a lot of other people do as well um, is what is the ideal wood um, and what should you avoid um, and there seems to be a lot of contention um, certainly between people I know who carve as to what is uh, suitable um, type of wood for carving, not so much in terms of the species and things like that, um, but sort of the, the, the condition in which the wood is in. Um, I'll give you an example, this is a piece of birch that I cut uh, very recently, um, it was from a fallen tree, as you can see there's a little bit of pitting in there, you've got some holes from some woodworm, um, the benefit of that is there's a lot of really nice sporting on either end which should show up quite well um, when I come to carve it, um, but this wood, in fact, sorry, if I come a bit closer again, so hopefully you can see close enough on the camera there, this wood is kind of at the point of becoming punky. Um, and that's to say that it's starting to rot. Um, however, hopefully you can hear that, it's still solid, it's not falling apart yet, it hasn't actually started um, to, to fall apart. Um, now obviously the sporting um, is... Uh, almost a sign of rot if you like, um, but I would be perfectly happy to carve with this wood. Um, you need to be a little bit careful when you dry it and it will be a, a little bit less solid, um, you know, it will be easier to break when it's fully dry, um, but it's, it's by no means going to fall apart in your hands or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of point number one, you know, I, I would quite happily harvest wood like this um, day in day out and carve with it, absolutely no problem at all. Um, benefit of this, the same as with really fresh green wood, is it will um, accept being cut by my various hand tools really, really well. Um, because it is, you know, I, I realise you can't feel this, but there's still a little moisture in this, it's still very damp. Um, it does increase the risk of splitting um, when it's drying out when you're carving, um, but that, that's a risk that, that any green woodworker takes. Um, and the, the sort of the polar opposite, if you like, of this is something like this. Now this is another piece of birch. Um, I cut this several months ago and it, uh, I had planned on using it for a slightly larger project. Um, never got round to it. So you can see on the ends here where it's dried out, it started to split. That's not a problem, it doesn't go all the way through. Uh, same on this end here. Um, and again, this is a very, very dry piece of wood. Um, again, solid. Um, and this is, this is um, you know, uh, basically a seasoned piece of wood now. Um, and again, I will quite happily at some point use this for carving as well. Um, it depends on what I want to make. I mean, because it's a larger piece of stock, it gives me a few more options. The problem being is when it's seasoned like this, um, it will take a lot more effort and it will uh, take more of a toll on your tools. You'll need to sharpen them more often. Um, and that's absolutely fine. You know, if you're willing to do that, that's no problem. Um, but again, these are kind of the two types of wood that I know a lot of um, a lot of green woodworkers, or a lot of woodworkers in general, will shy away from. Um, now, obviously, if I could walk out today, cut down a small birch tree um, from live, um, chop up the sections I need, bring them here, and carve them straight away. That is the ideal for green woodworking. Um, and the idea being is that you can carve it while it's still very, very fresh. Um, as long as it doesn't split while it's drying out, you will get a lovely solid piece of carved wood, whether you're making a bowl, a spoon or whatever. Um, this stuff, it's slightly more difficult. As I say, the, the seasoned wood will take a lot more time, a lot more effort to carve. The um, sort of the, the slightly less fresh, but still very, um, very damp wood will carve relatively easily. You just have to be a bit more careful with it. Um, where it's, if it is starting to go a little bit punky as well, um, you need to take a bit more care as sort of chunks can come off while you're carving. Um, but really, it was just following the conversation I'd have, I thought I'd do a very quick video about these two sort of types of wood, if you like, in terms of something that's fully, pretty much fully seasoned, something that's on the way to starting to go rotten but hasn't quite got there yet and is still solid. Um, and as I say, a lot of people will shy away from using them because they don't think they're any good. Um, now, I've carved with both and I, and I will certainly continue to do so. You know, as a preference, if I could get fresh, green, newly felled wood, um, I would certainly take that over this. Um, but if it's not available, which to a lot of it is not, I, mean, I, I won't go down to my local woodland 
um, and cut down a live tree. Um, it's just not something that I, I, I do. Um, I, I, you know, I don't own the woodland um, and I don't have a right to cut down the, the, uh, the trees down there. Um, you know, if I did have that right, I would probably do one uh, maybe once every now and again, but certainly not very often. Um, but quite regularly, I will go down there and I will find a fallen tree similar to this, maybe not as far as, as far gone as this, um, but on quite a lot of times I do, and I will use this quite happily to carve with. And as I say, you do get the benefit of the sporting on there, which gives you a really nice um, look on a finished piece. Um, and also this, you know, where I have been lucky enough to um, find a really, really, I mean, last year there was quite a lot of high winds in the autumn time last year. Um, this was part of, if memory serves, it may have actually been longer that I've had this for thinking about it now, um, but I've actually uh, found a really, really fresh, kind of literally a day or two old fallen tree. Um, I chopped up a load of sections, I did a couple of trips, um, brought a load of it back in my workshop, and I carved a lot of it um, within, say, three or four weeks, and I kept them sealed in, um, in plastic bags and things to keep them fresh. Um, and they worked out really well, but there were some other pieces like this, and I'm I mean, just sitting here now, I can see three or four off camera, um, big rounds sort of about this sort of big, maybe that long, um, that have now fully dried out. Um, and I will use those for carving at some point, um, and if for any reason I don't, um, they're absolutely fine as, as uh, material for, for using for firewood and that kind of thing. You know, they're that dry now that there's no risk of, uh, of them spitting or anything like that when you put them on the fire. Um, but anyway, guys, just a, a couple of my thoughts. It was a conversation I had that uh, I thought might be of interest to you guys, especially if you're either new to carving or you've only ever carved sort of fresh green wood, which I know can be difficult to get hold of depending on, you know, where you live and what, what availability you have locally. Um, but I hope it was useful. Uh, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys.